Although Lugmunder Gudrumsum had to do this for the goodness of his own realm, by holding down his brother, plucking his eyes out, and removing his genitals by sawing it off with a knife or a sword, Lugmunder Gudrumsum still felt guilty that he had done wrong. Plus, he had a uh, slight threatening of excommunication for what he had done against his own brother. Regardless, Lugmother Gudrumsum sought forgiveness with God by going on crusade to cleanse himself of his sins. Ireland in the First Crusade this small work is to cover both the Gaelic, native Irish, and the Usman, Irish Vikings, who joined the larger crusade army off to Jerusalem, which departed France in 1096, and possibly also the Norwegian crusade that departed London in 1107, which was also a part of the larger campaign with many crusaders coming together to go to the Middle East to fight against the Muslims. I must debunk the myth, the notion that 12th century Ireland was in a complete isolation from the rest of Europe, as it's not true in the slightest. For example, Citric Silkenbeard, who was the King of Dublin at the time, started a reform of the church straight after the Battle of Clontarf in 1014 and with the support of Canute the Great in 1028 and also the support of Rome. As part of this reform many Gaelic and Usman would go on pilgrimage to Europe. It's basically these reforms were set at the end of the Viking Age when the Irish went a bit mental with slavery and raiding and all of that debauchery that the Irish were now starting to clean themselves and to put themselves back on you know the whole golden age of Ireland with saints and scholars so Ireland went on a reform path, a cleansing path as you would say the Ireland was no different at this period the continent of Europe was going through the Georgian reform that had started in 1073. The tides of the Georgian reform would also reach Ireland the same year and by 1101 the O'Brien clan who were in the middle of uniting Ireland once again had worked with the Irish church as part of this reform and with the O'Brien clan they would hand over one of their older capitals the rock of cashel and they would give that over to the church and the o'brien clan would announce that dublin would be their new capital from now on for this the o'brien clan was recognized as the kings of ireland to the papacy magnus Bearlegs, king of norway showed recognition with a marriage between his family and the o'briens and funny enough scotland would gift the O'Brien clan with a camel as a token of their acknowledgement. In the late 12th century, when Pope Urban II called for a crusade, it is recorded that this great thunder did not fail to reach England and the other islands of the ocean. In contrast, nowhere in the Irish literature mentions the Irish joining a crusade. However, the people of Ireland did start going on pilgrimage, highlighting the fact that they replaced crusade with pilgrimage because you don't go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem in this period. So it's heavily hinted that the Irish are taking up arms and going to pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem to uh, clean it of the Muslims. This is also seen in Norwegian literature as well, where they also refer to crusades as a pilgrimage. Later, in 1095, when the Pope called for men, an Usman called Lugmudr Gudrunasum was looking to repent for his little sin of castrating and blinding his brother. You know, cutting off his own younger brother's genitals and blinding him for life because he was a rival to his own kingship. 
You see, you must understand, Lugmudr Gudrumsum was king of the Isles at the time. The Isles rightfully belonged to Murtuk Ibrin, and he had recently outlawed slavery in his kingdom. Lugmudr Gudrumsum's main profit at the time was to kidnap young women and children and to sell them into slavery. He'd done so both in England and in Ireland, annoying and irritating both the kings of England and mostly the king of Ireland because the king of Ireland had to keep him on a leash. So Murtuk Ibrain was going to go out of his way to smash Lugmudr. Furthermore, the king of Norway was also coming down to usurp and get rid of Lugmudr because his old Viking antics of going out and committing Viking piracy was undermining the new period for these new European kings. And so these European kings needed to get rid of Lugmudr. Lugmudr himself wasn't ignorant. His own brother, Hafdan, had worked with the O'Brien clan, with Murtuk Ibrain, to undermine and get rid of them, and get rid of Lugmudr. Lugmudr, in return, got rid of his brother by plucking his eyes and removing his genitals. And let's be honest here, Lugmudr knew his time was done and needed to escape and just like many Irishmen, both Irish Vikings, Ustmen and Gaelic men, native Irish, who didn't feel like they fitted in this new reforming Ireland that was getting away from the Viking Age Ireland, they decided to take on the cross. Sadly, Lugmudr was most likely killed in the siege of Antioch in 1098. In 1103, many Usman and Gaelic Irish who did not support the O'Brien clan as they were seeking to unite Ireland, it is believed they found their escape in going on pilgrimage to Jerusalem with Olaf. In the future, the king of the Isles of the Irish Sea, who then joined the Norwegian Crusade in London, it is recorded in 1110 that the Norwegian Crusade called at Constantinople if they did survive the long journey going to Jerusalem and fighting between the Muslims and the Crusaders, so on and so forth, those who did not have a place to return to in Ireland most likely joined the Varangian Guards, who were an elite fighting force of Constantinople, the Eastern Roman Empire, which today is called uh, Eastern Bull, which is a part of Turkey today, because eventually the Muslim Turks would take over the Eastern Roman Empire and rename Constantinople to Eastern Bull. All the way up to 1272, many Irish would join the Crusades in later years. This in return would have a change in the landmarks in Ireland, when many Knights Templars and Knights Hospitals would build castles throughout Ireland showing its historical links with the Crusades. So the idea that Ireland was cut off or isolated around the Crusades is a clear myth. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always subscribe and like and details are in the link below. Thanks very much guys.